Get down, get down, get down. Right. Cecil, 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 where's the doobry? Where's the doobry? Where's the doobry? Thank you. Oh. Welcome. Welcome to the Story Emporium repair shop. Easy, easy now. Now this article here is a very greedy article. This article here, and I'll show you him if he's calm. Just be still and calm. This artist, all right, it's all right, will hoover up anything in its way, good or bad. It does not discriminate. It's a greedy, greedy, greedy article. And as you know, the greedy man is never satisfied. Now, what we're going to do is fix him, fix him by feeding him something, feeding him something that he will like, you will like, you will like, you will like. Dennis, I'm going to put him in. Okay, just feed him around there. Feed him around. You're all right, Cecil. It's okay. It's okay. You've done this kind of thing before. But not with this article. Easy, 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 easy. Now you can stay there if you wish. Stay there. You can see what's going on. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, some of the things we get in this shop, Cecil. Um, do you know? I think the article, and you, and Dennis, would quite like to have a story about greedy things. Would you like to have a story? Okay, well, my dear Cecil, ring the bell. Ring the bell. It's all right, Dennis. Story's coming. Don't worry. Thank you very much. Uh, but while I'm telling the story, I might as well get on with the work. Um, Cecil, pass me the Cynthia Dorse, please. Ah, thank you very much. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, once upon a time, there was a parrot. And the parrot was a very smart parrot. The parrot was a very good parrot. The parrot locked the door of his beautiful clean house and went outside. He was walking down the road, and who should he see but a cat? And the cat was sitting on the curbstone, head in his hands, and looking very sorry for himself. The parrot stopped, and the parrot said, Hello, cat. What's the matter with you? The cat said, Oh, parrot, I'm so fed up. Everything's going wrong. Nothing goes right. Life is horrible. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, hang on, hang on, said the parrot. Listen, cat, why don't I cheer you up? You come round to my house this afternoon and we can have some afternoon tea. And then tomorrow, I'll come round to your house and we can have some afternoon tea. You see, when people get together and be friends, there's, there's nothing that they can't solve. Oh, all right, said the cat. All right. Oh, thank you, parrot. Thank you. I'll be round at two o'clock. Well... Uh, sorry, would you pass me the, the, the Brian, please? Pass me the Brian. Uh, well, the parrot went home. The parrot began to make all sorts of things for the cat. The first thing the parrot did was clean the home. Clean it so much that it shone shone like a new pin. Then he started to make cakes. Um, pass me the, uh, do, uh, the uh, babshilak. Where's the babshilak? Pass me the babshilak. He cleaned the place beautifully and he began to make cakes. And he made a hundred cakes. And each of the hundred cakes had a different topping on top. Then he made the tea. He brought out his best tea set. Everyone had a cup a saucer and a teaspoon. There was a knife placed on one side and a side plate, and he made delicious tea, and he put serviettes all around. He couldn't wait for the cat to come. Ding dong! The cat rang the doorbell. Oh, said the parrot, and took off his apron, ran to the doorbell and said, my dear cat, come in. But it's too late. The cat didn't come in when he was invited. 
The cat pushed open the door and barged in. Oi, where's my tea? Where's my tea? Are you listening to this? Where's my tea? And then he saw the hundred cakes there on the table. Well, he started laying into the cakes. He ate all of the cakes. Then he got the teapot and he did this. Then he got the milk. Then he got the sugar. And he went. Ah. And then he went into the parrot's sitting room, put his feet up on the coffee table, switched on the television, and just started watching television. So rude. So, so, so rude. Pass me the Tweedledum, please. <coughs> Now then, Parrot said, oh, come on, <laughs> is it heavy? Is it heavy, Cecil? Uh, let me just give you, there we go. Now then, the Parrot said, well, do you know what? I'm not going to behave like that when I go round to the cat's house. He couldn't wait. The next day, he dressed up, he wore his wonderful silk scarf that he put behind his head, and then he went and he called on the cat's house. He knew where the cat lived. He pressed the doorbell, and the doorbell went, diddling ding diddling ding 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 If you hear a doorbell like that, be aware. diddling ding diddling ding 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 He had to wait 20 minutes before the cat answered the door. And when the cat opened the door, uh, oh, what are you doing here? Said the cat, and the parrot said, we had an appointment. You were supposed to give me a nice afternoon tea. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> all right then, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. So the cat invited the parrot in. My dear friends, that house was a complete disgrace. The floor was black and sticky, and it should have been white tiles, but the cat had never cleaned it. There were cobwebs all over the place and dust. And when the parrot went into the cat's kitchen, it was disgusting. There were things growing in the sink. Oh, no, said the parrot. The cat's done nothing, nothing to prepare for this afternoon tea. I'll have to do it myself. Well, the first thing he had to do was clean up. Now, my dear Cecil, if you're going to clean up, what you must do first, open the windows. And that's what he did. And he started to scrub and he started to mop and he started to clean that place until it was as clean as a new pin because the parrot wouldn't eat anything from a kitchen which, which was dirty. And since the cat had not prepared any food, the parrot began to make the cakes. Would you please pass me the Brian and the George, please? The Brian and George. Well, he made the cakes and he made, oh, lovely. He made 100 cakes. He made 100 cakes and each cake had a different topping on it. Thank you, Cecil. After making the cakes, he made some tea. He found a pot and made some tea and he put by the serviettes. He said, cat. The afternoon tea is ready. I've made it, even though I made you your tea yesterday. The cat came in. Where's my tea? Where's my tea? No, you've got to sit down properly. You've got to put your serviette on like an Italian child. I don't care. And he dived into the cakes and he started eating the cake. <laughs> now the parrot was very quick. He stole two of the cakes and he put the, the cakes behind his back. And the cat finished. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? There were not 100 cakes here, and I've only eaten 98. Where's the other two? And the parrot said, the other two are behind my back, and you are not going to have any of them. And the cat said, you what? And he grabbed the parrot. He opened his mouth. He ate the parrot. <laughs> and when he'd eaten the parrot, he turned around, he went out of the front door and down the street, still greedy, still hungry. Would you pass me the deprecation, please? The big one. That's brilliant.
thank you for the deprecation. Well, that parrot moved down that street so quickly that he didn't see there was a huge commotion in the town. He didn't care when he saw all the banners out and the bunting. But he did come across a man, a man with a donkey. And the man had a big stick. And the man said, Oi, uh, cat, uh, don't come any closer. If you come any closer to this donkey, this donkey's a pretty naughty donkey. He is going to kick you. And the cat said, You watch! And he grabbed the man, he opened his mouth, he pushed the man in. <coughs> then he grabbed the stick, he ate the stick. <coughs> then he grabbed the donkey by the tail, he started eating the donkey's tail, <coughs> the back legs. <coughs> and then he ate the donkey's head. Then he continued down the road, down the road. Would you please, Cecil, give me the popple shoot? And uh, the cantankerous, please. Thank you very much. Going down the road, he still didn't notice all the bunting was there. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. And he saw a woman. And the old woman was in the front garden. The old woman was doing her garden. And when the old woman saw the cat, the old woman, thank you very much, the old woman said, oh, Cat, don't come into my garden. I've just planted my flowers. I don't want you disturbing my flowers. And if you disturb my flowers, I'm going to throw this stone at you. The cat said, You what? And the old woman, she got the stone and she threw the stone. Well, that cat, he jumped up in the air, opened his mouth, <coughs> swallowed the stone, then hopped over the fence, grabbed the old woman, <coughs> and swallowed the old woman. Slippers and all. Well, the cat began to march towards the centre of town, still greedy, still looking for something to eat. And there was a huge crowd of people. And the cat joined the crowd. Well, there was balloons and the smell of candy floss, and all the people were talking in an excited kind of a way. Well, the cat pushed his way towards the main road, and he stood on the curb that was lined by the whole town. And he asked someone, excuse me, excuse me, what's going on? And the bloke looked down, and the bloke said, oh, well, the prince and the princess are getting married, and everyone is so excited. We're here to celebrate their wedding. Oh, said the cat. Oh, well, I like uh, parades and weddings and that. I'll, I'll stay and have a look. And he looked down there. Would you please pass me the, uh... Have you got... Have you got, um, a Barry Mulligan? Oh, uh, yeah, pass me the Barry Mulligan, please. So, down it went, the parade. Thank you. First of all, there were soldiers marching, and the cat liked that, oh. And then there was a band, a band from Blackburn, and they were playing um, tuba music. Then after them, well, after them was a Scottish band, and they were playing bagpipes. And then after that came a huge elephant. And on top of the elephant were the prince and the princess, so handsome. So beautiful. And the prince says, I love you, darling. I love you. 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 And the princess said, I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. Well, the cat was looking at all this and he was enjoying himself. He'd calmed down a little bit. But one of the Scottish blokes in the Scottish band walking by said, Hey, cat, put your wee feet in. If you don't see that elephant, that elephant, that elephant might step on your door. And the cat said, You what? And he grabbed the Scottish bloke. Uh, and he started eating the Scottish bloke. He had his bagpipes. Well, the other Scottish bloke said, Whoa, what's going on with my friend? But he grabbed them as well. And he started eating Scottish blokes. And then the Blackburn band turned round. And they came up to the cat with their tubers. And they were trying to hit the cat. Oh, you can't eat Scottish blokes round here. But they grabbed the tubers. And he grabbed the Blackburn blokes. And then he saw the elephant. And he grabbed the elephant's trunk. <laughs> 
Uh, 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 he began to eat the elephant's trunk, then the elephant's head. <laughs> then, on top, on the back, was the prince and princess. Oh, darling, darling, what's happening? Don't worry, darling, I'll save you, I'll save you. Come into my arms. But he ate the prince and princess. And then everybody in the town just ran from this nuclear cat. But the cat, he just made his way down the road. But the thing is, there were two land crabs. And the land crabs, they were talking to each other. Hello, Wilfred, how are you? Oh, Betty, I'm all right, I'm all right. Oi, Wilfred, look over there. There's a cat coming down here. Oh, I'll tell you what, Reggie. What I will do is I will tell the cat to be careful because we is dangerous, ain't we, ain't we, ain't we? Oi, cat, you better be careful of us because if you come near us, we might nip you, we might nip you. And the cat said, you what? And he grabbed the land crabs and he ate the land crabs and the land crabs went down his throat. And as they went down his throat, Reggie, Reggie, it's all right, Wilf. It's all right, we're getting to the end now. They dropped into the cat's stomach. Oh, Cecil, it was mayhem. Everyone was going bananas. The donkey had a big stick and was chasing the old man. One of the Blackburn blokes were throwing a stone at the old woman, the Blackburn blokes and the Scottish blokes, they were fighting the air. Uh, the uh, elephant was going mad, the horses were kicking off, and the land crabs went, hey, Reggie, Reggie, we gotta get out of here. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's chaos. I know what to do, Wilf, I know what to do. And he started to pinch the inside of the cat's belly. And soon it opened up and <laughs> they popped their heads out. Quick, make a run for it. The two land crabs ran away. Now the elephant saw daylight coming in from this little space. <laughs> the elephant started to run, pushed his head through, making the hole bigger and through. And then came out the Scottish blokes and then came out the Blackburn band and then came out the donkey chasing the old woman with a stick. And there was the old man throwing a stone at the donkey. And the last person out was the parrot. And can you guess what he had in his hands? Two beautiful cakes. Pass me the butterfly, please. Uh, the butterfly, please. Ah, well done. Now, you see? The article, are you watching? You eat this apple, and this apple will make you ungreedy. <laughs> there we go. That is the end of the story. And what I'd like you to do is come back to the Story Emporium Repair Shop. Here, we can repair anything. Cecil, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.